Hello from the ABA Mid-Year Meeting 2019 in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm Christopher Butler, and I'm your host for this podcast. Ainka Jackson. Amy Horton Newell. Buck Lewis. Joshu Harris. Eric Story. And we're on the road with Legal Talk Network. And we're back. Thank you so much for joining us on On the Road. It's a pleasure to be here in the entertainment capital of the world. Uh, I have a wonderful panel of guests here, and we're here to talk about 10 ways to change the world, talking about ABA public interest and opportunities in the pro bono world. So if you could all tell us a little bit about yourselves and let the listeners know who you are and what you do. My name is Ainka Jackson, and I am on the Commission on Homelessness and Poverty with the ABA, and I'm also the Executive Director of the Selma Center for Nonviolence, Truth, and Reconciliation in Selma, Alabama. And so on the panel today, I spoke about um, the struggles that we're having in Selma, Alabama. In 2014, our county was the poorest county in the state. 2015, the most dangerous place to live in Alabama. In 2016, the eighth most dangerous place per capita in the country, and how Selma has largely been forgotten and even though we helped to change the world. But the ABA Commission on Homelessness and Poverty did not forget uh, Selma. So they came to Selma in 2016 and convened a meeting on on race and poverty. And, uh, you know, you had everybody there from judges, lawyers, law enforcement, and advocates and those who are directly affected by those issues. And we all came together and had a conversation about what we needed to do in our community and what were the problems and what we could do. And that wouldn't have happened if not for the ABA Commission on Homelessness and Poverty. So just very grateful for the work that they do, that we do now that I'm on the commission um, to convene people, to educate people uh, as we seek to end homelessness and poverty. And I'm the director of the American Bar Association's new Center for Public Interest Law, which was just created this year. And we are working with more than 3,500 entities across the association to engage lawyers in uh, public interest law activities and pro bono opportunities, with the focus being on high impact across the country. Uh, My name is Buck Lewis, and I'm in the third year as chair of the ABA Pro Bono Committee. And um, in this session, we discussed a lot of activities uh, of the committee. Um, We hold the the Pro Bono Publico Awards uh, luncheon every year. We hold an Equal Justice Conference with over a 1,000 stakeholders every year. And then uh, we're the driving force behind um, ABA Free Legal Answers, Uh, which is an opportunity for uh, low-income clients to post a question on the internet and have a volunteer lawyer uh, go on and answer that question and give them valuable limited scope advice. And we've answered over 60,000 questions now in 36 states. We have been joined by another wonderful panelist, and I would like uh, if you would introduce yourself and tell our listeners what you do and a little bit of your background in this. Um, My name is Wendy Wayne. I'm the current chair of the Commission on Immigration for the ABA. Um, In my day job, I work as uh, the director of the Immigration Impact Unit at the Massachusetts Public Defender's Office, where I uh, specialize in the intersection between immigration and criminal law. Hey, folks, good to be here. Uh, Joshua Harris, chair of the Standing Committee on Gun Violence and also uh, legislative director for City Councilman Kenyatta Johnson in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Hi, my name is Eric Story, and I'm the uh, director of Grassroots for the Governmental Affairs Office. Um, We are the eyes, ears, and voice of the uh, legal profession for uh, federal issues, uh, especially in front of uh, Congress and the executive branch. Uh, So it is my job in Grassroots to connect uh, individuals, uh, members especially, with their members of Congress and bolster them with whatever assets they need to uh, be able to share their story effectively. Thank you. So uh, my first question for all of you is that there is a wide range of where your interests and areas you work are, but they all connect in generally where you have people in um, dire situations. They may not have the financial means to be represented or they just won't get represented at all. So what should aspiring law students current law students and young legal professionals know about your area in the field and why it's such a rewarding area to work in? 
I think uh, we are entering a time right now where everybody is is fully aware of what's going on in Washington. Uh, what happens on Capitol Hill is what's happening on Twitter, is what's happening on Facebook. And uh, it is our job to get people off the sidelines and get them uh, engaged with their members of Congress. So every single young individual that's out there has a story to tell, has a perspective that's going on in the legal profession, and uh, really has some key insights that members of Congress genuinely want to hear. And uh, we would really uh, impress upon any young attorney, our, our burgeoning attorney, to really try to get involved in Congress because what they have to say, what they have to do, really matters. Immigration law is, uh, the, the work that is happening right now in the immigration field is why I went to law school many years ago. Um, there are so many aspects of the system right now that um, lack fundamental due process and fairness in the system. And um, what speaks to me most strongly is that as a public defender, um, I used to try criminal cases. And as most people know, in the criminal system, you have the right to an appointed attorney if you can't afford one. In the immigration system where you may um, be deported back to a country where you will be tortured or killed, um, you have no right to appointed counsel. And so the majority of people um, in immigration detention who are basically in jail prior to their deportation go through immigration proceedings, which is a very complicated area of law um, without counsel. It's a really rewarding area of law. There's a huge need for pro bono services. Um, there's been the commission and others uh, within the ABA have worked really hard over the last couple of years to increase the pro bono opportunities for people who are in all areas of law to participate and help those who would not otherwise have counsel. As a former public defender um, representing adults initially and then uh, young people and uh, as a the Metro Guardian at Lightham in Nashville, so I represented children who were abused and neglected, then now I do something very much so different, but I see them as related. Uh, I'm the director of a nonprofit who addresses violence in all its forms, whether racial, physical, or economic violence, um, which is poverty. And so I, my advice to young people, do what you love, and then the rest will fall into place. So often, you know, in law school, they push you, drive you, or you feel a pull to do what will make a lot of money. Um, and I, I say do what will make you sleep well at night. <laughs> um, that you, what would you do if money wasn't an option. If you could do whatever and money would be taken care of, what would what, what fuel you? What are you passionate about? Because there's so much uh, hurt and pain in the world. And so we have to have agents who uh, seek to heal that hurt as we seek to create a, what I call a beloved community. And so I, I say, take the classes that support um, that vision. Uh, and then, you know, there is sacrifice, but I believe that that sacrifice is worth doing what you love. My background relates to homelessness and poverty, and for the last two decades, uh, my work at the ABA has focused on removing legal barriers for people experiencing homelessness and for um, vulnerable populations such as homeless veterans and homeless youth. The ABA recently launched the Homeless Youth Legal Network, and uh, we've been focusing on documenting existing legal services for homeless youth and homeless minors specifically, as well as the unmet legal needs. And sadly, we've only been able to identify about 30 programs that serve homeless minors in terms of providing direct legal services. And those 30 programs are only located in 20 states. So the pitch I'll make here today is that we need more lawyers engaged in this work. The fact that if you uh, come to me with a homeless youth in crisis and I cannot pull out a Rolodex and identify any lawyer or any legal services project that will serve that homeless minor is a very real problem. So we need boots on the ground now. And I would encourage any lawyer or law student who is interested in pursuing a career such as this in the public interest arena, it will be tremendously rewarding. The impact you will make it will be real and you will be making an impact every single day. Well, from the, the pro bono committee's perspective, I would echo a lot of what has been said already. And, um, and I would say that if you're talking about guidance for 
law students and young lawyers, you don't really have to look any further than the preamble to the rules of professional conduct Mm -hmm. because the preamble makes it crystal clear that we are all, every single one of us, supposed to give of our time and our resources and our civic influence, that's the words of the preamble, to provide equal access to justice for all of us. And that that really should guide every single one of us. So it's been just been said, what we really need is a lot more people to start doing their 50 hours of pro bono a year and getting involved in whatever cause uh, they may feel passionate about. I can tell you that the immigration situation alone has probably doubled the workload of our staff and it's made it very difficult in some of the states uh, where some of these things have taken place for us to meet that need. And so uh, we, we need more lawyers to say, hey, I've never done much pro bono before, but I'm ready to do it now and to pitch in. There might have been a time within my lifetime where you had to convince people that gun violence was a pressing issue nationally but and locally, but um, that time has long since passed. I think Today, more than ever, we're in a situation where people feel personally affected by the issue of gun violence. Um, Even if you don't personally know somebody um, who's been affected by gun violence, you know that your kids are doing shutdown drills at school, you see it on the news, and it's not any one community or group of people that's affected by it. It's everywhere, unfortunately. Um, According to CDC stats, just um, in the last year alone, we've seen a uh, dramatic spike in gun violence to the point where it's close to 40,000 deaths a year. Fortunately, what I've found is that when you talk to young people, you don't have to convince them. In fact, they're the ones demonstrating a lot of the leadership that's out there on this issue. I was tremendously gratifying for the Standing Committee, for example, to team up with the Law Students Division to um, coordinate participation in the March for Our Lives in Washington, D.C. It's uh, an example of the work that we're doing to try to make sure that uh, some of our best, brightest, most idealistic young people are cooperating arm in arm with um, the big bar, as we call it, to make sure that the work that we're doing is reaching as many people as possible and um, that it's uh, making a difference. Thank you all for those answers. Those all had a common theme of we need more help and we need more people to step up and do the work that we're called to do as lawyers to ensure equal access to justice. Before we close out today, and I know we could spend hours and hours on on this topic, um, and just in case any of our listeners have more information that they want to get from you or they want to step up and need to know more about the opportunities, can you drop your contact information or contact information of your organization so that they'll be able to do that? The Selma Center for Nonviolence, Truth and Reconciliation's website is www.selmacntr.org. We're also on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The ABA's Commission on Homelessness and Poverty website is americanbar.org slash homeless. And the Center for Public Interest Law at the American Bar Association's website is americanbar.org slash public interest law. You can find the Pro Bono Committee on the ABA website as well. You can just Google ABA Pro Bono Committee and it'll come up for you. And you can find me by just Googling Buck Lewis, Tennessee lawyer, and uh, it'll, my contact information will be up. Um, the Commission on Immigration's website is uh, within the American Bar Association website. I don't know the exact um the exact address, um, but there is information there about pro bono activities, about the direct legal service programs that we oversee, um, and some of the other work and resources that we do. Yeah, I'm Google ABA Standing Committee on Gun Violence. We do policy programming, education, outreach, you name it. Um, there's a role and an opportunity for any person who cares about this issue, and we'd be glad to have you uh, join us. Uh, There's actually several ways that uh, individuals can get involved with the Governmental Affairs Office. Please Google us. uh, Just Google uh, American Bar Governmental Affairs. Uh, You can also follow us on Twitter at ABA Grassroots. But please, I I really encourage everybody to go onto our website and see the different ways that everybody can get involved. Uh, You can join the Grassroots Action Team. You can join Section Heads uh, in their efforts and their campaigns. Um, There's just a wealth of ways that you can get involved. Well, we've reached the end of the road for today's episode. 
I want to thank our guests for joining us today for this wonderful discussion about ABA public interest and pro bono opportunities. We also want to thank our listeners for tuning in. Before I leave you, I'd like to leave us with a quote by Dr. Martin Luther King. This was his new definition of greatness. He said, everybody can be great because anybody can serve. You don't have to have a college degree to serve. You don't have to make your subject and your verb agree to serve. You don't have to know the second theory of thermodynamics and physics to serve. You only need a heart full of grace and a soul generated by love. So if you're out there and you want to serve, you don't need to do anything but have a heart full of grace and a soul generated by love. If you like what you heard today, please subscribe, rate, and review us in Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or your favorite podcasting app. We'll see you next time for another episode of On the Road with Legal Talk Network. I've been Christopher Butler. Have a good day. If you'd like more information about what you've heard today, please visit LegalTalkNetwork.com. Subscribe via iTunes and RSS. Find us on Twitter and Facebook. Or download our free Legal Talk Network app in Google Play and iTunes. The views expressed by the participants of this program are their own and do not represent the views of, nor are they endorsed by, Legal Talk Network, its officers, directors, employees, agents, representatives, shareholders, and subsidiaries. None of the content should be considered legal advice. As always, consult a lawyer. Bye.